We know, for example, in childcare centres, there's a lot more hands-on contact, very close interaction potentially between parents, carers and young children. So these all need to now be mitigated against as we move forward to learn to live with COVID-19 in the safest possible way. Hi, my name is Christine McCartney. I'm the Director of the National Centre for Immunisation Research and Surveillance and a Professor at the University of Sydney and welcome to my Masterclass. We've done a study situated here in the state of New South Wales, which is the largest state in Australia. Approximately a third of the Australian population lives in New South Wales and there are around 1.8 million children under the age of 18. These children attend around 3,100 schools and thousands of early childcare and education centres across the state. When coronavirus started across the world, and certainly after the first case was seen in New South Wales, public health authorities everywhere were monitoring for cases, testing, isolating and tracing contacts. We worked closely with New South Wales Health to do this from the time at which the first COVID-19 case flagged in a, an attendee of a school in New South Wales. So this was actually on the 5th of March and it was at a high school in Sydney and a student uh, was found to have coronavirus and was considered infectious while attending the school. So from that time, together with our public health colleagues, we very closely looked both at the student or the teacher who developed COVID-19 when they came to a school, as well as following over the course of the month, all of their close contacts. So close contact was defined as someone who spent around 15 minutes face to face with the person at the school, or alternatively around about an hour in the same room, typically the same classroom or, or school activity. What we found over the course of a six week period from the beginning of March through to mid April was 15 schools where there had been a staff member or teacher who was infectious while they were at school. Across these 15 schools, there were 914 close contacts, of which 15% were teachers. So doing extra swabs in the first one to two weeks while these students or teachers were in isolation, and then following up in some schools with optional blood testing at the end of the month to see if there was any silent transmission of infection, we found only five secondary cases of COVID-19 occurring in these close contacts, a very, very low transmission rate. Of these five close contacts, two were detected using the PCR nose throat swab for virus, and three were picked up using the blood test taken at around a month after exposure. Two of the five secondary cases were asymptomatic. They hadn't been unwell during this time. But importantly, following on from them, there wasn't any spread in any of the schools. So a very small number in these primary schools, of which there were five, and high schools, of which there were 10 high schools. Overall, this is consistent with what we've seen internationally, which is that children tend to have milder disease and seem to have disease at a lower rate, uh, certainly quite a lower rate than adults. Around half of the infectious cases in the schools were in teachers. So it sends an important message for both teaching staff, adult staff at schools and students to be careful with hygiene, uh, for social distancing as it can appropriately occur in schools to be in place and also, of course, for environmental cleaning.
Schools had remained open in New South Wales over this period, although attendance had declined in line with the Premier's recommendations to move to distance learning, particularly in the two weeks before the school holiday period. The second part of our study was examining childcare centres. So here we're talking about not just long daycares where children from six weeks of age up to around five can attend, but also playgroups and preschools. Over the same six week period from early March through to mid April, there were 10 early childhood and education centres where a child or a staff member who had COVID-19 and were infectious at the time, uh, attended that centre. In nine out of those childcare centres, we saw no transmission of the disease at all. There was, however, one childcare centre where a large outbreak occurred. Interestingly, the first case to be noticed in that centre was in a young child. But on further investigation, it was found that indeed it was a staff member who hadn't been aware of their illness, who had attended, and subsequently a number of other staff members and children were infected in that childcare centre. Overall, with the exception of the one childcare centre, no transmission. But again, it speaks to the fact that there are many important measures here to be able to control the spread. The virus can spread when people are in close contact with one another and in settings uh, that are probably much more like the home. We know, for example, in childcare centres, there's a lot more hands-on contact, very close interaction potentially between parents, carers and young children. So these all need to now be mitigated against as we move forward to learn to live with COVID-19 in the safest possible way. Overall in New South Wales, during the six week period that we examined, in children there were only 98 cases altogether in the whole state. So in that 1.8 million population, just 98 children infected. It tells us a lot about the virus in children and our study does provide quite a bit of information on transmission in schools, which we found in our context to be very low.